Honey Bell. In fact, I was looking through my old PowerPoints and I had mentioned Meerkat and Periscope in a talk that I was giving. And who even knows what they are? You know, Boomerang is still around, but it's now part of something else. So that is a lesson that I'll talk to a little bit later, is just because something is trending doesn't mean you should jump on it, because I've seen trends over the last 19 years since I've had my own business come and go. So first, I'm going to start with what is called my origin story. Obviously, 66 years would take a very long time to go through all 66 years, but I'll just do it by decades. I was a really, really shy and chubby child and weird, like geeky, chubby, glasses, braces. Um, and next week, if you follow my blog, you'll see some of the pictures of my youth and my progression. And as I often say, it's only worth looking in the rearview mirror to see where you've come, because that can inform where you're going. And so people who see me speak now, because professional speaking is a big part of what I do, and I just started doing stand-up comedy last year, they, they can't believe that I used to like wet my pants every time a teacher called on me in grade school. Not literally, but so very, very shy the first 10 years of my life. Then I went through my swan phase in my teen years, lost a lot of weight, became sort of popular overnight, which was very weird for me, but then discovered that I had a talent for writing. That was my superpower. And I teach a workshop called Finding Your Inner Superpower. If you go into your childhood, you'll always find that one thing that the teacher wrote on your report card. You know, Missy is very good at organizing. And now Missy happens to be a professional organizer. So if you do that soul searching and say, what have I always loved to do and what was I good at? That will define my future. So I majored in English and psychology in college, thought I was gonna go to law school, ended up blowing off law school, going to NYU graduate school in publishing at night, and then got tired of being poor. I was living in Manhattan, publishing doesn't pay very well. So I ended up in financial services. And for whatever reason, probably because I was a good storyteller and a lot of corporate life is just learning how to spin, I rose very quickly up the ranks and I never really liked financial services. But I got to work on some fun stuff. It was the early days of FinTech. I worked on home banking. So that was the beginning of my technology journey. Um, although I've always been a little bit of a gadget girl. Then realized that I had never really liked financial services and made a switch to work for Reed Exhibitions, which is the producer of ComCon and other global trade shows. Um, got into the C-suite, which was the holy grail for women in the 80s. And once I got there, it's like, I don't really like this. I'm stressed out all the time. It's bureaucratic. I can't be creative. So 19 years ago, I left and started my own business. And as I was telling Nathan, um, who is here today shooting me, so thank you, Nathan, um, I um, have had years where I was almost at a million dollars in revenue, which only 4% of women-owned businesses ever achieve that level. And then during the recession, I lost it all and then some. So, um, G-Man, you probably know the, the, the lyrics of the song. I've been a pauper or a prince, it's an old Frank Sinatra song. I often think about that when I think about my business journey. But the good news is I know a lot more now than I knew then, 19 years ago, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So, number one out of 12 is have a vision. And what I mean by that is say to yourself every morning in the mirror, or buy a puppet and say it to the puppet or say it to whoever you live with, I will be blah, 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 fill in the blanks. And about 10 years ago, I was watching a professional speaker and I said, you know what, I can do that. I will be a professional speaker. I will publish some books someday. And I look back now and I say, everything I said I was gonna do, I ultimately did. And what I want to make sure I'm doing in today's presentation, I'm going to leave time at the end for Q&A, is then give you some very specific techniques and tools you can use. Um, how many of you use Canva? Okay, most of you, which is great. What I do every year is I create a vision board using Canva. And I just have fun with it. I drag and drop pictures. I drag and drop words. And that defines what I'm going to be doing in the year ahead. And then, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, I prune the board. Because 
you know, I limit myself to that size as if I'm gonna print it out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I say, okay, what are those things that are most important to me? So I don't wanna get out of camera range, but I will be for a minute. So, you know, there's a woman from the 1960s dancing. So I love live music, I love to dance, that's gonna be a part of my life. Um, there's a stake in there because I have a tendency to hire people based on how they present themselves. It's very common in the marketing and PR world. So I'm committed to going with steak and not just the sizzle. Um, boundaries, do not cross. Setting boundaries for myself. So a good practical example of that is people are asking me all the time to volunteer for things. And I go through this process, you know, there are only X number of hours in a day. Is this something that's gonna serve me well, either personally or professionally? And if it's not, it gets asked off the off the list. So this is not one of the 12, but learn how to say no. And I wrote a book with two co-authors, and today one lucky winner is not only gonna get this book, but my entire series of books. It's called Manifestation for Skeptics, because I know a lot of people who believe in what I call the woo-woo, like you just put it on the vision board and then it manifests itself and happens. Can I curse, John? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. Nobody has ever achieved anything just by sticking it on a piece of cardboard or in a camera. You have to take the steps. You have to make the decisions to get to where you want to go. So those are my tips for creating a vision very practically and then bringing it to fruition. Um, I know I'm not supposed to be doing sales plugs, but I do have copies of the book here. Normally sells for 15 bucks. Today it's five, so if anybody wants it, and has my Venmo link, so use it wisely. Um, do not be charging, maybe, do not be charging it next on my Venmo. Um, and this is really important, I know we've done sessions on this, is make a plan. A plan is a very, very, very specific document. It could be one page, my plan is about 15 pages. I do do this for a living. People always say, well, what do you actually do to make money? This is one of the things that I do, is help small businesses create their plans. It's not too late, it's only January 4th, so you still have 12 months to make things happen, but if you're really gonna scale a business, you need to have a plan, even if it's just one page. Um, and then have a plan for your life as well. Um, I was talking to a girlfriend last night who said that she's anxious all the time, she doesn't have enough time to get to the gym, those are things that are activities that are super important. If you are not taking care of yourself, you're not gonna be able to care, take care of your business. So make the time in your life for those things that bring you joy. So this is a graphic that I created. Again, you can tell that I'm a Canva fanatic. But this, this is a summary of my strategic plan. There are three things on it. There are not more than three things. If I find myself doing something that's out here, I'm not in here. I have to question why I'm doing it. So I'm launching, actually yesterday, I start, did a soft launch of a new brand called The Easer Proofer, which is helping people 45, 50 and older remain relevant and active. Uh, today I got one of the biggest compliments I've gotten all year, even though it's only four days in, <laughs> that um, Nathan told me I have more energy than he does. I will be 67 in February. Mm -hmm. I'm tech savvy. I'm active, I was at the gym every day last week, I'm tracking my macros, I'm working out. Thanks to Missy, my closet is organized, I can find everything I need when I need it. So that is a big piece of what I'm doing this year, is this pro-aging community that I'm a part of. Because people over 50 control 70% of the disposable income in America, but we're living in a world that's been youthifies, so we need to really take back our power and make sure that marketers are treating us with respect and understand that we have wallets too. It's not all about just dancing on TikTok. I also publish a blog about daily affirmations, which I know is kind of lingering and it's kind of snarky and cheeky and fun. Um, the fingers crossed, you know, always <coughs> keep the faith. I love this graphic on a number of reasons, for a number of reasons. And it's also forge relationships with the people who really bring you joy and where it's totally symbiotic relationship. Again, steak and not sizzle. It's a great time of year to do your spring cleaning in terms of looking at the people and the activities in your life and decide what you're gonna leave on the cutting room floor and embrace those people who are your true friends and connectors. 
And then last but not least, writing and speaking, which sometimes pays, sometimes doesn't, so I have to balance that out against my heavy work. This is another um, thing that I do sometimes. Again, if you're a graphic thinker, this is a great exercise. There's a, an app called wordart.com. There are a bunch of free apps that do the same thing. And you can create a <coughs> word cloud, which is really good as part of your vision board and as a planning exercise. Look at the words that really speak to you. And then what's very cool is you can put them in any, any kind of shape that you want. You can even import a graphic and put the words in that shape. And what do you do with it? You use it as a reminder of your key words for the year as well as sharing it on social media, which I've done it before and it gets a lot of engagement when people start putting in their words as well. Um, get a coach. And a coach could be anybody. It could be somebody who is in their 20s, who just is teaching you about the best way to use digital media. Um, it could be somebody who's 30, 40 years older than you are, who just has seen a lot of stuff and knows a lot of stuff. It could be somebody who theoretically is a competitor, but who has lessons that you can learn from. Like John has been very collaborative in the formation of this group and doesn't dismiss other groups in the Valley. In fact, he collaborates with them to create a larger community. Um, or an advisory board. So when I did the draft of my plan, I had a short list of people who I really know, like, and trust and have worked with over the years. And then had, I had them review my plan and ask me really tough questions, poke holes in things. In fact, that's where that three-pronged graphic came about. One of my advisors said, you have so much stuff in here, I'm not really sure what your focus is. So that led to the creation of that graphic. I know you're gonna agree with this one. <laughs> Embrace your p and um, Lesson learned, and it fits into the sizzle steak and number five category. I had a, my trusted assistant after the pandemic, or actually after the recession, discovered there, there are two, two dips in, in, life, in business life over the past, past years, but I discovered that he had embezzled $5,000 from me. <coughs> and there is not a business owner who has been in business for a while who hasn't lost money to a dishonest employee. So just show of hands, how many have had your business for five years or less? Okay, I'm saying most of you, five to 10 years? More than 10 years. Okay, good, so we've got some seasoned pros in, in the room. Um, you know, if your gut says somebody is dishonest, you're probably right. You know, I used to hear this guy shredding documents all the time and I joked with him about it, but then I discovered he was shredding my bank statements. He had worked at a bank, he had been bonded, he had been vetted, I checked his references. Again, if you've got bad gut about an employee, about a vendor, about anybody in your life, trust your gut. Um, but embrace your P&L, know how much money you're bringing in every year, know how much money is going out. And this is really, really important. Invest in what matters. So the other day, um, in one of the groups, online groups, people were posting their logo. And somebody commented on my logo, which I've had for the past 19 years, I've only changed the tagline, but it was done by a professional agency. It wasn't done in Canva, it wasn't done in Fiverr. I always draw the analogy that coming up with a name and a logo for your business is, by, is like giving birth to and naming your baby. You wouldn't crowdsource a baby name. The name and the look of your company can be timeless. You shouldn't be changing, up, changing it up every year. My last talk I gave was on personal branding. And getting your head around who you are, what you do, what you stand for, how you look, down to the level of how you dress. So when I was, had decided to get on the speaking circuit, I worked with a speaking coach. And at the time, I did a lot of eye rolling because he was having me cut pictures out of magazines of what kind of fashion styles I liked. I'm like, is this a makeover show or is this a speaking trip? <laughs> and the logic, which has lasted years and years, <clears throat> is when I go do speaking gigs in other cities, packing is now so easy because I have my brand look. So I know exactly where in the closet to pull from. 
I know what to pack. I know how I'm going to present myself when I'm on stage. I know how to present myself when I go out to networking events. I know, you know, G-Man is really common. I know he's been picking on people, but some of the people in the room are like great living examples. He does a Frank Sinatra cover act, and everything about him on social media just oozes Rat Pack. Like you have no doubt when you look at his stuff, and Jenna, you've done some great, great shots of him, it's pervasive. It's, you know, the same way Steve Tyler, who's older than I am, has not changed his look. Mick Jagger, Tina Turner, you know, so this guy who was having me cut pictures from magazines was really onto something. He also had me define who my favorite performers were and why and emulate aspects of their look and feel and incorporate it into my own. So I could do a whole session just on personal branding, but this is an area where you should never, ever, ever squeak and trust the professionals. Because if you build a great brand, it can be truly timeless, which in the long run saves you money. This is one that I had real problems with over the last 19 years, is focus. Picking out what your priorities are gonna be and learning to say no to things, to things that don't fit. It blows my mind how much time some small business owners are spending on selfie videos. Like, if you're a model, if you're an actress, if you're a how-to person that really <coughs> is showing you tips of what you do, then it makes sense to do that. But every hour you're spending shooting yourself, is an hour you're not spending thinking about how you can scale your business. So I've learned some really, really clever hacks of how you can create daily social media content without shooting real video. Um, because I didn't even grow up in the digital media era, so I'm very adept at using analog skills, I call it like scrapbooking, where if you take still and you thread them together and you put music in the background, poof, it suddenly becomes a video and it takes so much less time to do, and most of the time you don't even need to put on makeup or use filters. Um, so don't be tempted by shiny objects, and learn how to say no politely, and it's something that I started in December, and <coughs> I've almost taken it too far, where I'm like, nah, that's not really my jam. Nah, I don't really have the time to do it. But once you learn how to do it, it becomes easier and easier, and then you're able to focus more on what's really gonna scale your business and make you money. This is another one I could spend the next three hours talking about. I've been using social media since 2005, which an intern of mine reminded me she was in kindergarten and didn't even have a phone on her. So I jumped on Facebook as soon as Facebook was launched. I was on Twitter the first day of Twitter. I've been on Pinterest since the beginning. Every time there's a new app that comes out, I'll download it and play with it and assess it in terms of, is this really gonna help me grow my business? Is this gonna help me build a bigger following? I just created a baseline, a baseline spreadsheet yesterday. I'm at about 30,000 fans, followers, connections, but it's not about the number, it's about the quality of the connections. It's who is in your circle. And I was shocked a couple months ago to find out that someone who I or what was working with in business only had 18 followers on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where the money is. And now we're gonna have our little quiz and whoever gets closest to the answer is gonna get the book series. How many people are currently on LinkedIn? No cheating, no moving like. Worldwide? Hmm? Worldwide or you oh. like us or? How many, no, how many users in total are on LinkedIn? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, someone said five, five million? Two of your million. Thirty five million. I said a billion, but that's just sick. <laughs> 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 uh, that's a lot. 23. Uh, that's a lot. Did you say 15 million? I'm going to say 30 million. Okay. 850 million. Uh, who said 850 million? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hold on one sec. Eight hundred and seventy-five million. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 um, obviously, 
LinkedIn has a much, much, much bigger base than that. But a lot of those people are randos. A lot of people are not there to do business. They're there to look at pictures of Aunt Gertrude or give themselves therapy when they're not feeling good about themselves and post pictures and videos. I'm as guilty as the next guy of doing that sometimes. Um, but LinkedIn is the ultimate power tool. I can track well over $100,000 in new business to LinkedIn. People follow me, they see that I'm writing, they see that I'm a professional, they reach out and say, can you write my website? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? So it is a true business community as opposed to a mixed bag. So if you're not on LinkedIn, get there. So I, over the last three years, have really built up my LinkedIn community to about 18,000 connections, but a lot of C-level executives, again, people with money who can afford the hiring, which is the name of the game. Because um, there are a lot of looky-loos, as they say in the real estate world, on Facebook, but that doesn't mean that they will ultimately be your customer. So apps like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, are great for businesses that are highly visual, retail clothing businesses, estheticians, but for service businesses, they're good for awareness, but they may not ultimately be good for getting that credit card number, that money zelled to you, because people on LinkedIn are there to do business. Um, engage, and this is really, really key. Look at your posts for the last month and see how many times you use the word I and me versus giving shout outs to other people. It's really, really critical that social media be truly social and be a community. It's not, again, you're not a celebrity. So yes, if you're introducing a new modality at a spa or you want to show the before and afters of my closet, yes, that makes sense. But it's all about building a community. And the same way you wouldn't stand up and talk for a day in this room about everything you've done over the last 30 days, balance it out. So it's what I call the 80-20 rule, which applies to my monthly newsletter, it applies to my social media. It's 80% you, 80% value, 80% benefit, 80% here's an interesting tidbit, information you may not have known, sharing of other posts that you've seen that might be of value to your readers, and then 20%, here's what I'm doing. Um, HubSpot.com, how many of you have heard of HubSpot? Okay, not too many. It is the best source of information on social media trends. Demographics, who is using what platform, how to create an email newsletter, what to post, what's working in social media. There is no harm in repurposing content I am going back to everything I've posted since 2005 and go, coming through and saying, well, this stuff is relevant. Nobody's gonna remember that I did this as a LinkedIn post in 2006. I don't even remember. So look at what you already have. It's like making a recipe at night with whatever you have in your pantry. So you don't always have to create new stuff. Repurposing is fine. And Pew Research is the other great source of demographics in terms of who's using what social media. So before you jump on the TikTok bandwagon or the Reels bandwagon, take a look at some of this data and start with who's your target market and what media are they consuming. Um, and I think John is gonna send, you send you the slides out after the fact, so you'll have hyperlinks for everything that's in there. Um, I was joking around with Nathan this morning. I said he is Robin to my Wonder Woman. And then we started geeking out on why don't any of the female superheroes have sidekicks? It's an interesting topic for discussion and probably write a blog about that in International Women's Month. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, but they could do it all. Uh. <laughs> they, th they think they could do it all. But you know, having a sidekick, I have one intern, Gina, who's worked with me for a year and a half, and she now has a full-time job, and she just stays on with me because she's interested in the work that I do, and she likes working with me, and I, I pay her in what I call beer money. You know, it's really minimum wage, but um, having somebody like her as my sidekick has been invaluable. 
She organizes all my content before I sit down to write a long white paper. She keeps track of speaking gigs. She creates outlines. So take a look at what talents you have where you either may be lacking or you just don't like doing that kind of work and delegate. And I have found, and not to be sexist, I have found that women have a tougher time delegating than men. You know, the rationale, well, first of all, I think it's because we're used to doing everything ourselves, but part of it is also, well, I just got the 10 minute warning. Part of it is also like not really trusting people with our business, but trust me on this one, if you get the right people, it's invaluable and it enables you to scale. Be bold and honest. Um, this is one of my favorite books ever, Crucial Conversations, and then there's a sequel called Crucial Accountability. I found out about it through my younger, younger daughter, and we now even use that in our family as a way of communicating, whether we have tense moments or things that are difficult to talk about. Highly recommend it. Um, talk to strangers. Case in point, this room, after I finish talking, if you don't know somebody, go up, introduce them, yourself to them, you never know where it might lead. Um, you don't get to be my age and not have had a really good track record of F-ups. I can list every single one of the mistakes, big mistakes, I've made over the last 66 plus years. This is another great book that I read last year, The Power of Regret. His whole thesis is that the term no regrets is BS. You say, I regret having done this, but these are the things that I learned as a result of having done it. And then track your mistakes and make sure you're not making the same mistakes over and over again. I did make the sizzle stink mistake again last year, but it lasted way shorter than it did the year before. I had an employee who just was not doing what she needed to do, was making mistakes, wasn't getting back to me. And that's what they say, it's hire slowly, fire quickly, which I finally learned. Look at your goals every month. Say, all right, how am I progressing against what I said I was gonna do? Make changes if you need to. If you need to disrupt your entire strategy, it's rare, but it can happen. But try to stay the course. There are a lot of people who fail. I who produced Mad Men had that script rejected so many times before he finally found a producer, and it was one of the longest running, most heralded shows on television. But you do have to get to that point where you say, and this is where an advisor can really help you, hope is not a strategy. Um, eventually, um, if, you're, if something is off, it can just drain your money, it can drain your time, and maybe you're just ahead of your time with your idea, so it may just be the right idea, but not right now. And then above all, and this is what this group is all about, have fun, be kind to other people. If you have to say no, or if you have to terminate a relationship, do it with kindness and crucial accountability. Learn, give back, um, to the community, which again, this group is really terrific at doing that and partnering with other groups. And that's all I've got. And I'm sure I'll have another 12 in the next 19 years, but those are like my top 12 for this year. Um, these are all the ways you can reach me. Pick your poison. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's the on switch. And then at the top of my profile is something called Linktree, which if you don't have it, get it. It's free, I think there's a pro version. But basically what it is, it's a table of contents for all of the things that you do. So somebody can go to, like sometimes you'll see on an Instagram post link in bio, you go up there and it has all the other things that you've done. So like for example, when I publish a blog, it will automatically show up in my Instagram link tree, which is again an example of repurposing and working across platforms as opposed to having to do each of them separately. So um, that's all I got. <laughs>